guys, Coyote Peterson here. Right now we're out in the thick of it filming season two of Breaking Trail and I just came across this beautiful northern water snake. Reminds me of all the amazing serpent encounters we had in season one. Let's take a flashback look at all of my coolest snake encounters. Looking back on the incredible adventures of season one, it's crazy to think about how many snakes we encounter. Whoa, 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 stop. You got a rattle? We came across a handful of adorable baby snakes. There were angry medium-sized snakes. And the typical signs of aggression, he's trying to bite me right from the start. Snakes at night. All right, it's a water moccasin. And snakes in the day. Uh, one thing I don't ever recommend you do is stick your hand into a hole after a rattlesnake. Snakes in trees, and snakes in the water. Venomous snakes, some with a serious dental arsenal of danger, and then of course, giant snake invaders that were as friendly as could be. Okay, she's kind of close to my face right there, sniffing me. I think the only place we didn't see snakes was on a plane. So without further ado, let's take a look at the top snake encounters of season one. One of my favorite encounters happened on North Bass Island, home to a variety of species. That is a baby Lake Erie water snake, but none more elegant than the fox snake. See her head's just kind of sticking out on the branch there. You see the check ring, goldish and black in color. Nothing is more exciting than climbing a tree to catch a snake. Okay, I didn't want to get much further off the branch than that. Ow, 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 ow. And that's how you scale a tree to catch a fox snake. And the good news for me is that this species is one of the friendliest on the island. And while North Bass is not home to any venomous species, there is a certain snake that does not want to be bothered. There's one! There's absolutely nothing I love more than running after and diving for a water snake. There we go, that's a pretty good sized one right there. That is the Lake Erie water snake. And the typical signs of aggression, he's trying to bite me right from the start. Wow, that is a good, ow, jeez. Yeah, he just took the tip of my finger and sliced it open. Okay, hold on, let me try to get him under control a little bit better. I'm used to being tagged by water snakes, and I'm sure some of you are cringing, but trust me, it looks a lot worse than it really was. From islands to the outlands of Arizona, snakes are everywhere. One of my closest encounters happened dark one night deep in the desert. Ah, uh, check this out, guys. Fantastic. This is the Sidewinder, one of the iconic species that lives here in the Sonoran Desert. And this is the smallest rattlesnake species that you can encounter out here. And they are also known as the horned rattlesnake. I absolutely love the way Sidewinders move, as long as they don't move too close to my face. Look how beautiful that snake is. Holy moly. Okay, don't get any closer. So if you come out here into the desert at night and run across a small rattlesnake and you see those two little horns, you instantly know it's the Sidewinder. The best Arizona snake find was actually the work of Breaking Trail director Mark Lyden. Oh, geez. Hey guys, there's a snake over here. What? Jesus, Matt, no, that's Careful, Kevin, Watch your footing, all right, Chance, come up slow. Oh yeah, that is a Western Dimeback rattlesnake. Priority number one, guys, is safety. I wanna get that snake out of there. I wanna be as careful as I can. He's basically sensing a couple warm body masses and he says, okay, this is not prey. These are potential predators. After getting this big boy out of the rocks, we got the surprise of our lives. You come across this guy in the Sonoran Desert, you step back and give it respect. Does he have double fangs? Holy cow, he does. Double fangs. Didn't see that one coming. Now rattlesnakes are constantly replacing their fangs, so one of these sets is getting ready to drop out, and then the new set will be in place so he can go out there and hunt for his dinner. Whether by the light of day or the headlamps of night, snakes seem to be everywhere. Uh, so night herping is when you're actually out looking for reptiles. Herpetology is the study of reptiles, so kind of the slang term is night herping. 
Oops, stop, 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 right there, right there. Jeez, get up, get up. Ah. It's a coral snake. Uh, this is one of the coolest snakes here in the Everglades. This is actually also the most venomous snake we could have encountered tonight. Personally, I seem to have the best luck searching out serpents on sunny mornings after a late night rainstorm. Whoa, 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 stop. You got a rattle? Yep, it's an Eastern Diamondback. Wow, what a beauty. That's a really good size Eastern Diamondback. This is not a good position for me to try to get you guys close to film. I don't always show off a snake's fangs, but the Eastern Diamondback is notorious for having enormous venom injectors. And this one certainly didn't disappoint. Uh, you get bit by those little hypodermic needles and you've got a hemotoxin going into your bloodstream that's going to start killing red blood cells. You want to get yourself to the hospital as fast as you possibly can to get some anti-venom. Last, but certainly not least, was the biggest snake of season one, the Burmese python. Now this snake is about 12 feet long and you can see why a python of this size would be quite the voracious predator out here in the Everglades. And what people really worry about is these eating some of the more threatened species like American crocodile hatchlings or the Key Largo wood rat. Sadly, these snakes are invaders to the Everglades and nothing is more destructive to an environment than a predator that does not belong. And this snake is used to being handled so I don't really feel nervous with a raptor on my body. I would never recommend that you try to pick up a Burmese python if you see it in the wild. Uh, you know, it's best to just leave it alone. Obviously, they're an invasive species here in the Everglades, so you'd want to alert somebody if you did ever encounter one out here. People get them when they're small, and they grow into these 12-foot giants, and then people release them into the Everglades. Unfortunately, when these snakes are now captured in the Everglades, they're immediately destroyed. This gentle giant was provided for us to film with, and on a positive note, is being kept in captivity to educate people on the negative effects snakes of this size can have on the local wildlife populations. I know a lot of people are terrified of snakes. Clearly, I am not. Okay, she's kind of close to my face right there, sniffing me. I'm gonna go up on my hat, all right. And whether you love them or loathe them, dove off the edge of that hill there and managed to nab two snakes at exactly the same time. This is absolutely awesome. Please keep in mind that these beautiful reptiles, when not considered an invasive species, are an important part of the ecosystem and are much more afraid of you than you should ever be of them. Looking back on season one, our official list of top 10 snakes are, number one, baby snakes. Look how cute he is. Wow. He's probably only a couple weeks old. Number two, the gopher snake. They will hiss, but this one, is really being pretty cool to hang out with. Number three, the fox snake. What an absolutely beautiful snake. Number four, the northern Pacific rattlesnake. Uh, one thing I don't ever recommend you do is stick your hand into a hole after a rattlesnake. Number five, the Lake Erie water snake. There we go, that's a pretty good sized one right there. That is the Lake Erie water snake. Number six, the Santa Cruz garter snake. Number seven, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. That doesn't mean we have to give it any less respect. Number eight, the Burmese Python. But I'll tell you what, if she wanted to, she could squeeze the life right out of this coyote. Number nine, the Sidewinder. Holy moly, okay, don't get any closer. And last but not least, number 10, the Double-Fanged Western Diamondback Rattlesnake. And he is absolutely beautiful. And as for season two, let's just say, we definitely plan to up our snake game. If you thought that was one wild adventure, make sure to subscribe to the Brave Wilderness channel and check out these other episodes so you can stick with us on this season of Breaking Trail.